Hello and welcome to our virtual class. The learning objectives on today's lesson, we are going to discuss the visual arts that use the new media. We will also learn how to describe and analyze the contemporary arts forms focusing on installation art and public art. We will also classify and compare these new media art forms. Okay, so the contemporary visual arts is the term used for the art of the present day. Usually, the artists are still alive and still making any artworks. In contemporary visual art, it is often about ideas and concerns rather than solely the aesthetic or the look of the artworks. Here, the artists are trying different ways of experimenting with ideas and materials. And one of the ways they use are the new media. So for classification purposes, we are going to group under visual arts the different art forms that make use of new media. We call them as your installation art, the public art, the mixed media and photography, and digital arts. So for the part one of our lesson, we are going to discuss the installation art and the public art. The new media art is an umbrella term for the artwork produced using our new media. So visual art is seen by the eyes and understood by the mind. Moving and non-moving images appeal to visual perception and this makes the scope of visual art very broad. Okay, so there is some diverse set of categories that we can relate to new media art, such as your digital art, computer graphics, computer animation, also your virtual, internet, and interactive art technologies. In new media, they are usually characterized by spanning practices ranging from conceptual and virtual art to the different performances and installations. Very often class, the new media art would act like a platform for communication and interaction rather than a closed work. There are three types of techniques being used in the new media art. So these are the types of techniques that we are using. First, we have your representational art. So here, the actual objects or the subjects from nature or reality are represented. It is a type of art in which we represent something, whether that be a tree in a landscape, an apple in a still life, or a figure in a portrait. Or in other words, it is the art which is clearly identifiable as something that which already exists in our life. So it would describe your artworks, particularly focusing on paintings and sculpture. A very good example of representational art we have there on the picture. Now that artwork was created by Giovanni Abin entitled The Tarsier Fever. So it is a collage on paper artwork on year 2014. So here in this kind of art, either they look exactly like the object that is copied naturally or realistically, or they can be styled for as long as the essential parts are present in the artwork. Second technique that we are using in media, new media, is the what we call abstract art. Here, the subjects are taken from reality and nature, but the artist would present them in ways different from the way they are seen in everyday life. This is not easy to grasp, like the still of life, like the portrait, or like the representational art, because it is open 
to interpretation in a way that representational art is not. Here, the artist would give us the freedom to explore the artwork and assign our own meaning to the piece. So this intensely personal process would enrich the viewer's experience of an artwork. Example of abstract art, the one that you can see on the picture. Now, this one was created by Oscar Florirendo entitled The Bula Bula. The third technique that we are using in the new media is the what we call non-objective art. So this type of art, it uses elements of the art and the principles of the design, but the artworks do not present or show a person, a place, or a thing in the natural world. This is having no, no recognizable subject matter. The starting point takes nothing from the visual reality. So instead of us drawing people, trees, buildings, or any observable things, in non-objective art, the artist would use different elements of art, gaya ng ating lines, shapes, forms, values, colors, and even texture. We have here example of non-objective art, the one on the presentation. Now that picture is created by Edwin Cosculuela entitled The Images 21. Okay? So those are the three techniques that we are using for our new media art. We have your representational, the abstract, and the non-objective art. Now let's proceed to the first um, group under the visual arts that make use of the new media. We call this as the installation art. Now talking about our installation art, it is a modern movement characterized by immersive, larger-than-life works of art. So usually, in the installation, the artist would create these pieces for specific locations that would enable them to expertly transform any space into a customized interactive environment. Okay, so in installation art, this is a kind of art form consisting of three-dimensional works that are often site-specific and designed to transform our interior or exterior spaces to achieve an effect. We can use different subject matter in our installation art. We can use like about globalization, migration, um, human trafficking, terrorism, power struggle, multiculturalism, environmental degradation, or even the climate change. We have here example of an installation art that can be found in the Philippines. Now, this installation art was created by Plet Bolipata. This was entitled as the Fly Me to the Moon Elephants. So this came from his in uh, for his installation art, which is the imagination, where he combined life-size metal doodled animals with mosaic buttocks. Okay, so this came from the what we call Noah's Ark. Okay, so dyan nang galing yung pinaka-subject matter niya sa Noah's Ark. Okay, so for our installation art, it would require a lot of labor and the artist usually works with fellow artists and assistants. It's because it may involve different skills, 
like welding, carpentry, construction, and even fabrication skills. Another example of installation art that can be found here in the Philippines. Now, this one is a beach whale installation art created by the Greenpeace Southeast Asia Philippines. Okay, so this can be seen before sa shores ng Naik sa May Cavite. Now, notice class that on this installation art, they are depicting a dead whale with a mouth full of plastic waste. They highlight here the need to address the plastic pollution problems in the Philippines. And the materials used here to create this type of installation was made from the plastic waste that were fished from the ocean. So yung mga nagpapalutang-lutang na mga plastic waste is yun yung mga naging material no, ng artist na gumawa ng installation piece na ito. Okay? So those are just some of the installation arts that we can found here in the Philippines na talaga namang pinagmamalaki natin being a Filipino. Now let's proceed to the different types of installation arts. First, we have your technology-aided installation. For the technology-aided installation, it uses lights, videos, or film that is projected. We have their example of a technology-aided installation that was created by Om David entitled The Grid Year 2015. So you can see this before sa UP Theater, malapit dun sa kanilang grass area. So here, this is called technology aided. It's because it uses lights. Or in some, they could also use videos or film to be projected on the installation art. Next, we also have your performance installation art. For the performance installation art, it is a combination of theater and dance performances. It is made under a specific span of time and lights and even sounds that are part of the design. So this would require us a careful planning for the placement of the materials, but more importantly, to achieve the desired effect when combined with light sounds and the performer's movement, when all of those elements would interact in the light-controlled space, it would make this installation type best appreciated. We have there a very good example of a performance installation art by Leroy New with the Sipat Lawin entitled The Gates of Hell. So here, the artist uses his own body covered in layers of expanding foam, captured in film stills entitled The Self-Portrait as Avatar, year 2013. Next, we also have your conceptual installation art. For the conceptual installation art, they put emphasis on an idea or concept rather than in an art object that can be touched. So this may include the artist to write a written text or an instruction or a question that would lead the viewer or the audience to think about an idea. The role of the artist here is to make the people think and reflect through the use of an art piece as a stimulus. We have the example of a conceptual inst installation created again by a Filipino artist, Toyn Imao. This is entitled as Coping with a Couple's Cup Use Conjugal Cupboard of Curious Cups cuffs and corpses. This was installed in the University of the Philippines year 2015. We also have your interactive installation art. For the interactive installation art, this is where the viewer can touch 
walk in or through, listen to, or even interact with the installation piece. In some work class, the viewers are given pieces of fabric or paper to write and then they can attach it to the artwork. The viewer's contribution would complete the meaning of the installation art. It is the audience who will lead and allowing the viewers to interact and become a part of the artwork through the different activities like walking, writing, sitting, or even playing with the installation art. So here, the contemporary artists often see in such art forms the freedom to let go and allow the public to dictate the form of their artworks. A very good example of an interactive installation art we have there on the picture. This is in a way to show the colorful Moro culture in the Philippines. It's an interactive art installation that has been unveiled before sa Ayala Museum Plaza. Now, this is called as the Manyara. It is with the joint collaboration of internationally acclaimed sculptures and visual artists, which is si Toyn Imao and si Liliana Manahan. It is one of the project of the Ayala Foundation, the Manyara, as an interactive art installa installation. So this installation class features 23 minarets and lanterns which seek to depict a shedding light to the richness of Moro culture and as a call for unity. Next, we also have your environmental installation. It involves ecological concerns and it is a celebration of an artist's connection with the beauty of nature, the natural world, and the environment. For the environmental installation class, the artists would like to educate the people about our environmental degradation or directly address our environmental issues or even react to the different natural disasters and calamities. So here we have example of environmental installation created by Martha Atienza the equation of state year 2019. If you could remember, Martha Atienza na feature na din siya sa isa sa mga art forms na diniscuss natin sa mga previous virtual classes, which is she created a video art underwater. But this time, she also created another art form, which is environmental installation. Okay, so again, those are some types of the installations that we can see here on the Philippines. So first, we have the technology-aided installation. We also have the performance installation, then conceptual installation. We also have your interactive installation. And lastly, the environmental installation. Okay, now let's proceed to the next art form that uses the new media, which is what we call the public art. The public art class is a reflection of how we see the world. Okay, so the artist responds to our time and the place combined with our own sense of who we are. So there are so many public art that we can see in the Philippines. And usually they are influenced by humans and social condition. And it reflects life and its many aspects. The construction of numerous commercial mall, malls, parks, business centers, and industrial parks created the need for our public art. They are not only put there for display purposes or for our tourists 
who travels in the country, but also it can express our community values, enhance the environment, transform a landscape, and even heighten the public awareness. Now, talking about the public art that we can see here in the Philippines, we have there a public art example. The city of Manila class is known for so many things like coal museums, preserved Spanish cult structures, and of course the world's oldest Chinatown and the historic sites where some of the most significant events in the Philippine history took place. Mention this city class and without a doubt, uh, Rizal Park is automatically one that comes to our mind. It is also known as the Luneta Park. It's the Manila's iconic 58-hectare park that is considered as one of the most historical places in Manila because this is where Dr. Jose Rizal was executed before. Okay, now let's proceed to the types of public arts that we can see again here on the Philippines. So first, we have this type of public art we call as community-based art. For the community-based art, it is an artistic activity that is based in a community setting. They are characterized by interaction or dialogue with the community and often involving a professional artist, collaborating with the people who may not otherwise engage in the arts. So we have here example of a community-based art. This is in La Trinidad Benguet, the what we call the Valley of Colors. This is one giant work of art that is made possible by the collaboration of the community's different sectors, plus over 500 individuals, and that com which is composed of local villagers, artists, students, and volunteers, ang gumawa ng artwork na ito. No? They put their hands together to finish this project. Several volunteers also from different organizations, they joined in creating this one big piece of art. Okay, so we call this as the Valley of Colors in La Trinidad, Benguet. Next, we also have your municipal art. Usually, it is located in squares, plazas, or in front of government buildings, even sa mga law courts, airports, public museums, or even sa mga academic institutions. The purpose of this is to instill patriotism and nationalism among the community members. Also, it serves as a historical landmark to educate the young and inform our visitors and our tourists regarding that place. It will denote any work of art which is designed for, for and cited in a space which is accessible sa ating general public from a public square to a wall inside a building. Yeah, they are open for public. This example that we have is at the center of the Obinian Plaza. It's the 1918 Rizal Monument. Ayan. Okay, so every municipality or cities or towns have their own municipal art. Next, we also have your land art. For the land art, they are made directly in the landscape by sculpting the land itself or by making structures in the landscape with the use of our natural elements or materials. Land art is also known as earth art. It was established by a group of pioneering artists who investigate our natural sites, alternative modes of artistic production and ways to circumvent the commercial art system. 
Okay, so we have here example of a landmark, land art, which interact with our nature and the environment. Now we call this as the specific gravity by Reg Yuson in Bonifacio High Street, Metro Manila. Okay, so the artist here designed a huge suspended boulder fountain suspended by three curving stainless steel poles. They are seemingly defying the natural order of the things. So here, the water would continuously flow from it through the what they call internal filtration mechanism, emphasizing on its suspended height, yet providing an ironic source of calm. Okay, we have the land art. Next, we also have your architectural art. So architecture class is the art and science of designing buildings and other physical structures. And the architectural art is used to decorate the facade or in front or in close of the concrete structure where we can see a large number of people would come together. So it forms part of an architectural structure or compound. We have there example of a architectural art. We call that as the Eastwood Modern Heroes by Seb Chua. We can see that on the Eastwood City. Okay, so Eastwood City, it's a cyber park and a commercial and residential district. It has an ID park, mga luxurious condominiums and hotels. There are so many retail shops then and restaurants and even mga corporate offices. We also have your commemorative monuments. For the commemorative monuments, this is used or created for if we're going to honor people for their heroism. Okay, so a monument class, it's type of a structure that is created no, for us to commemorate a person or an event or which has become relevant to our social group as part of remembrance of our historical times or cultural heritage. We have their example of a commemorative monument. We call this as the People Power Monument. It is a sculpture of towering people commemorating the People Power Revolution of 1986. It is located on the corner of Epifanio de los Santos Avenue or EDSA and the White Plains Avenue in Barangay Camp Aguinaldo, Quezon City. It was made by Eduardo Castrillo okay, in year 1993. Okay, so commemorative. Actually, yung first na example natin ng public art kanina, which is the Rizal Park or the Luneta Park, is another example of a commemorative monuments. Next, we also have your design-based public art. For the design-based public art, it is used for decorations and Usually, it is located in parks or commercial centers. The design or the theme matches the buildings and its surroundings just to achieve the what we call the unity because the artwork here is viewed in relation to its natural and man-made surroundings. Its interaction with the sunlight and the wind and its position in the harmony with its surroundings is considered by our contemporary artists. We have there on the picture example of a design-based public art. Now that is the Balanghay by Leo Gerardo Leonardo at the Bonifacio Global City in Taguig. Leonardo class drew inspiration from our pre-colonial history, the boat known as the Balanghay, 
was used by the Malays who were among the early settlers in the Philippines and Barangay. Uh, the artist also reflected then on the notion of the birth of a community. Okay, so we have now the Bonifacio Global City. By the way, the Balanghai glass is a Moro boat with colorful and curvilinear sails representing the Sarimanok and ochre elements from the Mindanao. It's designed as a kinetic sculpture. Each of the sail would respond individually to the different wind shift but would react communally in an animated fashion. Okay, so we have the design-based public art, Malanghai. And lastly, we have here the campaign-based public art. For the campaign-based public art, this public art would like to promote an idea by making it visible reminder to the public. This is a community-based art that would use different subject matter well that could be depending on what type of idea these the artists would use okay so for as long as they would engage the members of the community in the interaction or dialogue with the artists we have their example of a campaign inspired public art it's the first boys and knockout project in edsa that would confront the daily chaos of EDSA with a vision of symmetry at the heart of all things. So we have there the social realist Jose Tens Ruiz. He has painted the San Lorenzo village wall with arresting marine fractal forms. Okay, So the artist decided to address the Metro Manila's commuters, the people who ride the bus or the MRT every day, now they travel more slowly down the highway and they have time no, to take in their surroundings. So usually, ang mga campaign-inspired public art kagaya nito is nilalagay na sa mga matataong lugar gaya ng mga sa highways ng ating EDSA. So, or sa EDSA Highway. Okay? So, class in media arts, no, we have different types of forms that we use like our installation and public art. Okay? So, let's recap no, the different types of public art. So, first, we have discussed the community-based art. Then, we have your municipal art, the land art, the architectural art, the commemorative monument, the design base, and lastly, the campaign-inspired public art. 